What's up, folks? Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be doing a two and a half year review of my Verbal CM3 throttle quadrant. I initially upgraded from the Warthog throttle, and back in the day when I watched a bunch of reviews, I wish there was a few things that people had pointed out that were reviewing this. Um, so today I'm going to do just that and hopefully help you um, decide whether or not you should purchase a Verbal CM3. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first of all, let me tell you exactly why I upgraded from the Warthog throttle. Um, first of all, I thought that the uh, the throttles themselves were a little bit flimsy and kind of plasticky feeling. I mean, these are plastic too, um, but the Warthog ones were kind of flimsy. I didn't really like that. Although that in itself was not um, enough of an issue for me to upgrade. The real issue that I had was, although there was um, an axis here like this that could be used for zoom, for example, in the Warthog throttle, um, the problem was it was just the one, right? So if you were using this as a zoom, at the time I was flying the Harrier a lot, so I needed something for the nozzles as well. And I couldn't obviously com combine that with a zoom. Um, and plus it's very annoying if you're, you know, flying hands and throttle and stick and you're, you know, in the middle of a fight or you're trying to zoom in into a target or something to take your hand off to then, you know, adjust that for zoom and then put your hand back on the throttle. It's very annoying. Um, so I wanted something that has another zoom axis on the throttle as well, which is why that was one of the main reasons why I got the CM3, because over here um, you have an extra zoom there. So it's got like a center detent that um, is kind of like, you know, uh, in the middle and then you can zoom out or zoom in. Um, it works okay. It's a little bit sensitive sometimes when you're actually in the jet. It's kind of, you know, it's just a tiny bit jittery, but it's fine. Basically, the reason I got this throttle and it's, it's been fine. Overall, it's been fine. But um, let me start off with some of the negative aspects straight away, um, because I think there's a lot of good aspects about this throttle, but there's definitely a few negatives. And I just want to get the negatives out of the way um, before I dive into the kind of the, the good stuff. Um, so first of all, um, ergonomically, I think it's not the best. Um, so what do I mean by that? If I position my hand uh, here like normal, you'll see that it's just completely occupied with a whole bunch of, we, we've, we've, we've got the TDC here, and then we've got um, a hat switch, and then we've got another hat switch, uh, and then we've got this zoom axis thing, right? So when you're kind of holding the throttle like this, um, it's actually kind of, especially when you start initially flying with it, it's kind of weird because you can't put really any pressure onto your fingers there because, you know, you're inadvertently going to move something. So I often kind of hold it like this when I'm moving, um, which looks a little bit silly, but, or I use my palm to kind of like put all the pressure on and off um, and it works pretty well. Um, but in my opinion, this ergonomically could have been done better. The zoom axis is fine. Um, I don't really like this this one here because it's kind of in an awkward place and it it's it's okay but it's not the best um the tdc is great this is good uh, and this button is actually pretty well positioned as well um the other thing i really think is an absolute waste of time are these uh things to try and lift um the the you know get into the afterburner gate um, now as you can see the good thing about the um about the cm3 is that over here i have this detent installed and they come with a whole bunch of detents, um, lots of different ones, and you can choose whatever you like. Um, so that's really, really, really helpful. Um, and in my particular case, what happens is you probably, you probably hear it. The throttle gets into just a little detent there um, to tell me that I'm, I'm in max dry. And after that, I can push it straight through into afterburner. And you can position these anywhere you like along the actual um, axis here so you know you can you can you can uh, choose the range of movement that you have and there's lots of different detents so there's some which will um, where you'll have to lift these whatever the hell they're called to lift uh, and get it into afterburner but in my opinion it's a complete waste of time one because you can see the way they're positioned it's kind of weird it's just these two fingers and 
it's very uncomfortable. And I don't, I just, it's just a waste of time, honestly. I, I don't know how many fighter jets really have something like this. Not very many, I think. Normally, you get to a point, you get some resistance, and then you have to push it into afterburner. Um, the good thing about having this detent that I'm using here is that um, it just, it, it doesn't give you any extra resistance, but it just gives you a little kind of, a little dimple there to tell you that you are in that, you know, just between max dry and max afterburner. Uh, and the good thing is that I don't really need to switch. If I'm flying like a helicopter I'm using as a collective or I'm flying, you know, some World War II airplane uh, or anything that doesn't happen after burner, I don't have to get rid of the uh, detent because this is a, a non-issue. It, it, I can just, I can almost just, you know, hear it and I can't really feel all that much. So it works really well as a compromise for flying everything and not having to change the configuration at all. So that's great. Um, the other thing I don't really like are these um, here. They often don't really work as two position switches. They only work as a one position switch, especially in DCS. Um, so you'll have to only just, you know, you, you can do it one way, but you can't do it the other way, which is really annoying. So if you know, if you want your flare on, it's not like this is on and this is off. No, it's not. You have to go there and then back only just to the one position. So I don't really like that very much. Um, the other thing I don't really like, in my opinion, is the, the position of all these hat switches here um they're not so there's 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 one there there's one there um and there's obviously one there as well now the way they're positioned but especially between these two it's super easy to confuse them even two years later i accidentally sometimes push one instead of the other and, and i fly a lot i mean I've, I've used this throttle a lot um and i'm still kind of not happy with these um i wish that they were maybe slightly different shape or in a slightly different position I don't really like it. Um, the other thing is this one, which is almost certainly going to be used for your radio, so something like COM1, COM2, MIDS, or whatever. Uh, the problem with it is it's extremely flimsy. It's super, super flimsy. Like now, you know, I'm just barely putting any pressure on, and it's just moving all over the place. Um, I don't really like that. I think um, what often happens is, depending on the position, it's super easy to push it or put it up, or, or, or you know, it goes up instead of forward or something like that. That's happened to me plenty of times. And so it's not a deal breaker by any means. It's just something I wish that, you know, in the next model that they would improve. Um, and these are fine. They're a little bit flimsy, but they're totally usable. Um, and again, when you press on them, sometimes it's kind of easy to, you know, go up instead of in. Um, but that's, I think, pretty much it when it comes to the gripes that I have with this thing. Um, because in a lot of other ways, it's actually really good. The buns here are very good, quite solid. There's one underneath there as well. Um, this axis is really good. The only complaint, well, not a complaint, but a, a suggestion I would have is to have like a kind of detent, just like what the, um, the Warthog uh, throttle had, which is kind of like a central detent. And then from there, you can use it. So you can, you know, it just gives you a little bit more um, possibilities. Um, but having said that, it works perfect. It works perfect if you're flying the Harrier, you know, you use that as your as your nozzles. Um, things I really like here are these. These are brilliant. These are really good. Uh, so I, I usually have that as gear up, gear, sorry, gear, yeah, gear up, gear down, flaps up, flaps down, and this is like the landing light, something. Uh, these rotary knobs are excellent as well. Love that. And they actually work as buttons as well. And there's another big kind of rotary thing here. And again, you can push it in as a button as well. So that gives you a lot of possibilities. Super, super useful. These buttons are fine. Um, you have to remember that when you're flying, uh, you're probably going to be doing all of this by field. You're not going to be looking down. And it's easy enough to find these, I must say. It's easy enough to find these. It's extremely easy to find these and these. Um, so in that sense, I think this is fine. Like I said, the, these are a waste, a bit of a waste of space. I don't really use these for much because they're more annoying than anything. Um, so I think overall, it's been a great throttle. Um, what I really like about it compared to the Warthog one is that, you know, the Warthog was really flimsy. You could move it kind of, it was kind of, you know, it was bending. Here, look, I'm trying to bend it and there's just, it's just nothing. It's just super solid. The movement itself is super smooth and it just feels, it feels really nice. Once you get used to the fact that your fingers are covering a whole bunch of stuff here, and it just kind of feels weird how they fall um, onto the throttle there. After that, it's absolutely fine. You kind of get used to that. And like I say, you kind of use just the, your, your palm, the palm of your hand there to just push it back and forth. So 
Um, in my opinion, that's great. I'm not showing you all the other detents, but there's plenty of other detents that you can position all the way along the axis here and, you know, even to lift the throttles to come back and, and kill the engines and all that kind of stuff uh, is there. So uh, I think that kind of covers it. Two and a half years later, it's fine. In terms of durability, I will say one thing. I've knocked this hat switch out with my slipper when I was getting out of my very much a homemade cockpit here. Um, so I knocked this off and then I kind of pushed it back in and one of these stopped working. I think when I push it down, it, it doesn't work anymore. Um, there's also a rotary dial here, by the way, which is fantastic, actually. It's, it's quite useful. Um, so yeah, so it's probably, you know, user error fault. So my fault, the fact that I kind of, you know, caught it with my slipper and it just fell out. Um, and apart from that, durability wise, two and a half years later, yeah, I'd say it's uh, pretty much perfect. Everything works exactly as it should. Um, it works. It, it works well. I'm happy with it. Um, I know now with the Warthog throttle, um, you don't have to necessarily lift it to get into the afterburner detent. I know now they come with this mod where you just get to that little bit of resistance and push it through, and that was really good. Um, the only thing that really made me um, go away from the Warthog is just the fact that I needed a zoom axis here. That was really the main reason. Otherwise, to be honest, I could have stuck with it. It wasn't It wasn't, It wasn't. wasn't that bad by any means, um, but that was really important for me. So um, the other thing is I would say on the Warthog, I think the positioning of all this kind of switch gear on the side is better, um, especially with that red one that can go kind of, you know, a few a few ways. Um, I think I think they could have done this part better. It's just a little bit frustrating to use these um, these hat switches here. But like I say, apart from that, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions in um, about this at all, um, feel free to ask and I'll be um, I'll make sure to answer you in the comments if I can. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So thanks very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or you found it useful, uh, please make sure to smash the living daylight out of the like button and uh, subscribe for future videos. And hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.